Hey, Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Well, we all saw this one coming, didn't we? <laughs> Your sub box is probably filled with a whole stack of Ryzen 5000 videos, but as usual, we're doing it different. We did two builds, two videos have just gone live. This one is the 5900X build. We've also got a 5950X build that just went live as well. So obviously the intros of for these videos are gonna be quite similar, but what we did is we built a pretty high-end gaming PC with the 5900X and an RTX 3090. We did our regular gaming benchmarks, but this is also a build video as well. It's kind of like a double whammy. So let's get into it. And then after all the building, we'll talk about some performance and some benchmarks. Let's do it. Right, so this video isn't like a super technical CPU review video like you're gonna see from all the other channels. What I wanted to do was actually put it through its paces with some of our regular gaming benchmarks because to us it makes a lot more sense, right? And it makes a lot more sense to people who are using these CPUs to build new gaming PCs. And the other thing that we wanted to do with this system as well was to use B550 because we're gonna get a lot of questions in the future about whether or not these we're gonna get questions in the future about whether or not these CPUs will perform about the same with B550. I'm happy to report, yes, it's basically identical with B550, but we had to build something to test it and find out. So let's see how this came together and then chat about all those numbers.
All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the build segment of this video, but now it's time to get down to business. Let's take a quick look at all of those benchmarks. What we did with these benchmarks is we actually split them into two segments. First of all, we did some pre-testing with the ASRock X570 Tai Chi with both the 5900X and the 5950X. Obviously, you can see the specs of our testing equipment right here. But yeah, I, I thought that I, I would actually share this with you guys because this is from another video that we're actually working on. But I, I figured that, you know what, I would share the Cinebench results because it would make sense just to really show you how these CPUs perform with synthetic workloads at launch so we don't miss sharing that information with you. The first thing you're noticing is both the 5950X and the 5900X are absolutely trouncing Intel's top offering, the i9-10900K. And this is kind of the trend for the rest of the Cinebench tests. These new CPUs, although they do have more cores for the multi-threaded stuff, are actually overall just faster CPUs. Quite obviously in the multi-threaded benchmarks, we're seeing a higher score. That's because like I mentioned, these CPUs do have more cores and more threads. So it does make sense that the score is higher. But again, in R20 with the single core, <laughs> you're seeing that again, the trend is these new CPUs are faster with their single core performance. I'm going to be discussing IPC and the uplifts and everything in another video, but like I mentioned, I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of what we found with our testing, just so we don't miss out on any information. And here's another little thing that I discovered as well, and I'm going to talk about this in the full video that we do about this. The 5950X, I saw hit a maximum single core speed of 4.96 gigahertz. And I took this photo on my phone just as a bit of a reference. So when I go back and when I'm writing a script, I, I could have a bit of a record of what I found. And I thought I would just share this with you because this is basically five gigahertz and for an AMD CPU to hit five gigahertz like this, even on a single core is very impressive. All right, this is the testing hardware that we typically use for our GPU benchmarking videos. Obviously, it's quite different to the system that we built in this video, but I did want to share this with you guys just to clear up any confusion. So any GPUs that don't list the CPU are tested with this exact configuration. Anyways, let's jump right into it and show you just how ridiculous these new CPUs are performing because we've got a faster single threaded speed and just keep in mind as well, Shadow of the Tomb Raider has always been more biased towards Intel CPUs because of that higher clock speed. Now with the single core performance being what it is with the 5900 and this 3090 at 1080p, it absolutely dominates the 10900K's results. And if we jump on over to 1440p, this trend actually continues. 1440p with these new Ampere GPUs have actually showed that the architecture is more geared towards higher resolution. So 1080p and 1440p are now CPU bound. And with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're actually seeing this. But at 4K, once again, it starts to level out and it becomes completely GPU bound. Moving on to Unige and Superposition at 1080p Extreme, this benchmark is highly GPU bound and we're kind of seeing that GPU bound result being echoed here with the 5900X, so no surprises here. And once again, when we switch to 1440p custom with no depth of field and motion blur disabled, which becomes more CPU bound again, we're seeing the 5900X pull away from the 10900K results. This is fairly impressive. Now, when we first ran these benchmarks, I had to run this quite a few times because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And yeah, this is the reality of what we found with this system in particular. And it just goes to show that B550 makes no difference to the performance. So if you wanted to run a B550 board with a 3090, you could and you wouldn't really run into any issues. And lastly, with superposition in 4K, it then begins to level out. Here's where it begins to get interesting. Basemark typically runs better on Intel CPUs and from 1080p to 1440p and on to 4K, we're seeing the 10900K pull away on every single occasion. Now this is actually good because this shows that these new Ryzen 5000 CPUs are not strong in every single test. As I mentioned in the intro of the video, 
we decided not to go super technical with this video for the benchmarks because we've got another video coming a little bit later after all the fuss is over with everything and all the launch videos you're gonna see in your sub box where we're gonna focus on Windows and Linux performance with kernel compilation and all the stuff that we usually do. So stay tuned for that. It's probably gonna be sometime next week. So if you wanna see that type of content, uh, stick around. I didn't wanna put it out for launch. It just didn't make a lot of sense because I really wanted to build you guys two PCs with the two CPUs that AMD sent us, the 5900 and the 5950X. Obviously, I don't know which one is which. Actually, I did get it right because the labels are on top, but yes, uh, that's basically it for the benchmarks and everything. But as usual, let's quickly chat about the parts because we're gonna get lots of questions about that stuff. Yes, this video is gonna go for kind of long, but yes, let's chat about the parts. The CPU quite obviously is the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. We put the 5900X on the ASUS ROG Strix B550 FY Fi. To cool the 5900X, we use the Leon Lee Galahad 360 with a custom made gear seekers pump top made by Claire with her new Cricut Maker cutting machine. Shout outs to Cricut for sending us one of these vinyl plotting machines, actually pretty awesome. We've been using it quite a bit. We've got lots of like gear seekers, stickers and stuff all around the place now in our builds. But yeah, but shout out to Cricut again for sending that to us because that's actually been really, really helpful for all the little custom things that we've been doing lately. For RAM, we went with 32 gigs of Antec Katana RAM. The reason why I decided to go with this RAM for this build is I just love how it looks. And when you light it up like a single color, it just, yeah, it's hard to beat the look of this RAM. And, that's kind of the thing with this build. It's kind of aesthetic, but it's also high performance. The GPU we went with is the ROG Strix 3090. Yes, a 3090 and a B550 board. Pretty interesting, works no problem. And obviously, last but not least, the case is the Cooler Master TD500 mesh. It's a case that we actually helped develop. We've got a whole video talking about that. And there is a link in the top right hand corner right now if you want to check out our initial TD500 video where we talked about us being involved in the development and the design process of this case. Yes, it's a gear seekers thing. All the rest of the fans and everything, they're all Cooler Master fans as well. There's a PC part pick list down below in the description. So you can check out all of the parts that we use in this build and that's basically it. It's, um, it's, it's feeling pretty good to say that, you know, AMD has the fastest gaming CPUs in the world for some benchmarks, not for everything. So the claim is, you know, that they, they've made the fastest gaming CPU in the world. I'm going to stand by and say that's possibly the case. Obviously, we haven't tested it with absolutely everything in the world, but from other benchmarks and stuff that I've seen from like the course leading up to this time that we've actually got like official benchmarks and stuff as well it is the fastest and Intel's just gonna have to, they're gonna have to cop that one on the chin. <laughs> and uh, that's uh, pretty much the way the cookie crumbles. Ah, man, this coffee tastes really good. Anyways, guys, if you like the music, I make all the music. There's a link down below in the description to our Patreon if you wanna grab the music. And we're on float plane as well. Obviously this one's not allowed to go early on float plane, but it is also on float plane too if you wanna watch it in higher quality. Yes, YouTube's compression does do weird things to the videos, but on float plane, it looks beautiful. Anyways, guys, if you like the video, smash like. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And finally, and I've been saying this for a long time, finally, AMD, I mean, they've had competitive CPUs in the last few years, but now, to be top dog, it's about freaking time. Thanks for watching.